Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. It's nice to see you here. I'm Sandra Grauschoff. I'm the marketing manager here at Cadeco. And uh, David Oaken is here with me. He's the lead mentor of our brand new Vision OS bootcamp. And he's here to talk to you a little bit about Vision OS and its potential. And um, also a little bit about how our bootcamp works. This is our first new bootcamp. We've been running iOS and Android beginner boot, boot camps for several years, but we just opened a Vision OS bootcamp. It's a short camp, it's six weeks. And in that time, David and his fellow mentors will teach you everything you need to know to get up to speed in Vision OS. But tonight he's going to be talking about why that matters to you and some of the cool things you can do with it. Okay, good. Let's get started. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody for showing up. Uh, this is going to be a fun one because we are really, truly on the bleeding edge of a, not just a new platform, a new device, um, but it's going to be really interesting to talk about my perspective on Vision OS and where it's going. So I'm going to talk about where I think the platform is now, where I think it's going, and the difference between those two things. And then I'm going to go into a very, very, very brief live demo of what it's like to code for Vision OS and how similar that is to the skills you may already know if you code for Apple's platforms today, such as iOS, Mac OS, et cetera. After that, I'll spend a little bit of time going through the syllabus for our upcoming uh, work, workshop, excuse me, our bootcamp that's coming up, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about that give you some good info on that. And then I'm happy to answer questions until it's time to sign off. Now, it's unfortunate that I'm not in my Vision Pro for this particular uh, uh, webinar. I, I, I want to point out that I do have one. I do own one. I'm not trying to uh, pull the wool over anybody's eyes, or I guess the goggles over anybody's eyes. Sorry, womp womp. And we tried to get this to work from Zoom. Unfortunately, Zoom's native app uh, does not let you join a webinar from the Vision Pro today. And as I was getting a little bit frustrated and trying to figure out, well, how are we really going to demo what the Vision Pro is capable of? I actually think that that's a really appropriate, I mean, almost like two telling microcosm of like where the platform is today. It's so new and it's so bleeding edge that there are companies still trying to catch up to be able to support it. Zoom being one of them. So, I want to start by talking about when we talk about uh, Vision OS, I think there's a key difference to point out. How fun is the platform to use? How fun is it to use the device and all the things that it offers today versus why should you be interested? Why would you want to actually take that plunge? Why would you spend the money to actually get one of these? I think it's important to point out that those are two different questions with two different sets of answers. So we're gonna start with the first one, the easier one, which is how fun is it to use? And again, short of putting this on and, and well, there, there's the virtual background, but short of putting this on and you know, standing here with it myself, just like this, it's hard to really demonstrate unless you've tried the real thing. There's just no substitute for the real thing, which is a pretty ironic thing to say about you know, being in an immersive spatial environment, but there really is no substitute for the real thing. I can show you some things in the simulator uh, which I'll be able to do, and I'll be able to show you things that I think are important. So I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to go over to the simulator to kind of demonstrate something. So one thing that I think is particularly cool, Apple's billing this as a lot of things. They're billing this as a way to immerse yourself in environments um, where you can you know, move things over to be you're either at Mount Hood in Oregon, or you're on top of a mountain in Hawaii, or you're you know, standing in Antarctica, and it's really cool the different things that you can do with immersive environments. But the reality is, most people using this device, most of the time, I'm willing to bet, are going to be sitting in a place where they're working or sitting on the couch. And the irony is that while you want to immerse yourself in an environment, there's still that feeling of, how do I get things done? How do I interact with other people, etc. And so if we look here in the simulator, I have two windows open. Now, most people, if you're in, really, there's, it's not just software development, but it's very common to see people who have two windows or two monitors when they're working at work. And you have one thing to usually read here, another thing to write code or work on a document, whatever you have 
it's very common to see people with multiple monitors. If you've ever been to New York City, you see people with these arrays of like six monitors. Personally, I'm a single monitor person. I like having one ultra wide right in front of me so that I don't have to turn my neck too much and see all these different things. And yet, when I'm in the Vision Pro, one of the things that I really like about it is the opportunity to customize my environments to whatever way I want. So again, a very, very parsed down example. But here I have Safari open on the left side and files on the right. And these are just examples here. But I can resize these windows to be whatever size I want them to be within the confines of actual Vision OS. And I can make this move over here. Um, I can you know, make this a bit wider if I want to. Uh, and then if I pan this over and I look a little bit more, I can go to the home menu and I can open another Safari browser window or I can open my photos application or I can make the simulator crash. Oh, no, I need the pointer. And so if I select photos, I can put photos up here on the roof and start to look at things around here. And so what that means is I can have control over my environment. Right now, again, as a physical person sitting in front of my one ultra wide monitor, this is my environment. I've set it up. This is tailored to what I like to have. Vision OS does give me an opportunity to break free of that. I can move this window wherever I want. So I can actually go over here and select it and I can move it over here to the right. I can move it here in front of the couch. I can move it further away if I want to. Again, we're, it's a little bit more difficult to do it in the simulator. The irony is that it's easier to do it in the device than it is in the simulator. But then I can just look up and I can say, well, I have photos up here, or I can play a video on YouTube up here, or I can play a movie. And it's really convenient to have something in the background and not actually have it interfere with my workspace. So one thing I personally really like about Vision OS is how customizable it is. Um, now, I think that's also something that strikes people as a little bit ironic because Typically, people associate Apple operating systems with being very, very locked down, very, very almost trapped into their way of doing things. And that's not untrue. Uh, obviously, Apple are very opinionated about how these windows look, the different utilities you have. You have to have a bar on the bottom to drag something around. You have a split view in order to be able to look at these things on the left-hand side for list detail views. You go up here and you've got this button that's gonna help you close out of a window. You can see that Apple have taken the time to standardize how they build this operating system. And yet, Inside those confines, what struck me was how customizable my environment can be for whatever I want to do. So for example, right now, I have these stacked in a vertical way. If I wanted to, say, move this over so that it's over on the left-hand side, I want to drag this down so that it's directly in front of me. Uh, and then if I look up one more time, oops, sorry. Again, way easier to use the real thing than it is the simulator. And so if I drag that down, and then what I can do is I can basically sit there without having to tilt my head up, if that's something that hurts me, I can look left to right and I have all these windows available to me. And what's better is that just by using my eyes and my fingers, I'm able to focus on that. And so what you can see is the operating system has gone to great lengths to say, well, when you're over here focused on a window, notice how much more transparent this Safari window is in front of us. Whereas if I've got the Photos app and Focus now, that's going to be a bit more opaque. It's going to be what I'm focusing on until I turn around and quite literally turn my focus to Safari. And you'll notice that it's not rendering that uh, as opaque anymore on the right-hand side. Now, it's hard for me to kind of hand wave my way through a demo in the simulator without being able to be in the Apple Vision Pro. There are other things that are really cool about the operating system. Uh, there's a fairly new feature in FaceTime called Spatial FaceTime, which it almost scared me how much it seemed like there was somebody sitting in the room with me uh, playing a game of Battleship or cards or what have you. Um, and it makes me think of four years ago when we were all stuck in a pandemic, how wonderful would it have been to be able to sit in a room with somebody when we were all craving um, you know, connection with people. I think that's one thing that's going to be really important as time goes on. I think I don't want to get into whether we're in a pre-current or post-pandemic world, but there's clearly still a need for experiences and operating systems that let us connect with other people from afar. And the idea that I was able to do spatial FaceTime with somebody who was nowhere near me, but it was like they were sitting in the room with me, that was very cool to be able to do. So 
there are tons more things that we could talk about in terms of how fun it is to use, but now we need to talk about how useful this is today. Um, case in point, it's hard for me to do a demo of how useful this is on a simulator where it's very difficult to demonstrate everything. Now, I am going to do a live coding demo in just a little bit of some of the things that you can do with this, but there are a lot of technologies that are still catching up. For example, there is not currently a Netflix native application. There is not currently a Google Meet app. There is a Zoom native application for Vision OS, and yet for this webinar, it does not work. And that's not meant to poo-poo on Zoom. It's just they're working very hard to make that work in line with all the other responsibilities that they have. Zoom has one of the most important, you know, video conferencing applications in the world. Here we are on it right now and the amount of work it takes for them to maintain that. It's a business decision for them to decide, am I going to vote to this? Am I going to devote this time towards what everybody uses or am I going to devote it towards a growing group of people that are depending on Vision OS? If anyone here works for Zoom, please tell them I would really like to be able to be in a webinar in the future for that, but that's neither here nor there. Now, if we click here, and go into the home screen on Vision OS, you're going to notice right away that there's two things here. We've got a couple of native apps. So we've got settings here, Safari, Photos. And if I tap Settings, what you're going to notice about this is that it's immediately familiar. If you looked at settings on an iPad or a Mac, this kind of menu looks familiar. And that's kudos to the Apple team for designing an operating system that looks familiar yet consistent with the designs that they're trying to put on that operating system. So even though you might be used to seeing a split view with list over here on the left and details over here on the right, every time you tap something or you select something, you can go and go through that pro uh, progressive disclosure menu style so that you can select these and you can pick different uh, you know, segmented controls for that. Again, these are all user interface components that you recognize yet are designed natively for Vision OS. Now, the difference is that if I go back to the home menu and I go over here to compatible applications, let's go ahead and open this Maps application. Now, in the simulator, I'm going to hit Not Now for this, and I'm going to hit Allow While Using App for that. What you can see is that if you have an iPad, this should look familiar. It's because this is the actual iPad application running in what's called compatibility mode for Vision OS. So. You may remember uh, if you developed for Apple platforms about two years ago, when they said that Apple Silicon is coming out, you can write iPhone applications and build them as native Mac applications. This is the same kind of coherence across platforms working with iPad applications on Vision OS. And so this is an opportunity for people to leverage their existing code and their existing applications right here on a new device. But you can tell when you look at the two side by side, and let me resize this just to make it a little bit more reasonable. When I go here, and let's say I go to a website right there, you can tell the difference, even though this is a web browser, and maybe this is a poor example of how to you know, really demonstrate that experience, but you can see all of the auxiliary controls around my experience, such as the back button up here, my slide over bar that I have where I can go to all my different tabs. I can make a new tab right there. You can see the virtual keyboard pops up. I can choose to share it and a native share sheet comes up. All of these components I get for free, whereas here in the iPad compatibility application, if I tap the profile icon, then what you see is that it recognizes I'm in the Vision Pro. It knows that I am not in an iPad, but everything here renders as though it were being rendered on an iPad. So the way that you see your menus are gonna look here just like they would on an iPad. You're gonna have these buttons over here, these popover methods, these popover views, these modal views that show up. All of these things are going to be rendered in compatibility mode. This to me is a great stopgap for people that are looking to ship their applications on the Vision Pro, but you can tell that even Apple today in their simulator on the latest version of Xcode has five applications that they have worked on for years, calendar, maps, news, reminders, and shortcuts. And even those applications do not have native Vision OS applications. That's again, not meant to say like, why is an Apple doing that? They're working on stuff just as much as we are. And so that means they've taken the time to make things like Safari available, photos available, settings, files, a number of others once you are actually in the device, but they're clearly taking the time to make sure that other applications are just compatible enough. Over time, this will change, but that speaks to the usefulness of the device today.
We're still on the bleeding edge. The fact that I am doing this meeting from my computer and not from an actual Vision Pro, again, speaks volumes to the fact that there's still a lot of catching up to do. Now, that being said, you'll have to take my word for it. I have written meaningful code in the Apple Vision Pro. I have sat right here in this chair at my desk, put on the headset, made a virtual display out of my monitor, and actually written shipping code that has gone into production actually today um, while I took the day off from work, go figure. Um, and so that code that I've written in the Vision Pro has gone live. Over time, I think you're going to see most use cases such as productivity and entertainment and interaction with other people you're going to start to see those grow in different ways. I think spatial face time is going to be one of those things that over time people see that as something more useful for working with other people. I can tell you that in a spatial face time call with a coworker, I called him and then I said, hey, let's pair program on this one screen that I'm working on. Apple Vision OS rearranged the spatial face time such that he was sitting next to me, my screen blew up and it was as though we were coding together on the same screen in real time and in real space. Again, it is painful to have to literally hand wave through this as though you will have to just kind of take my word for it because today I cannot demonstrate that in real time. I hope that the next time we do a bootcamp for Vision OS, we're able to do that. Um, but that's something we're going to have to count. Now, Enough hand waving, let's get to some actual stuff here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close these other windows. And now if you're thinking about going to that bootcamp, you might be thinking, well, is Vision OS something I really wanna invest my time in? You know, I'm an iOS developer. I haven't really learned much about Vision OS. I don't know anything about AR kit. I don't know anything about three-dimensional development or visual development or anything like that. Is this really the right thing for me? I'm here to tell you that I actually think it is based on the tool set Apple has already come up with. So let's go over to an IDE here. Now, if you went to my last workshop, uh, which was how to write an iOS app in under 50 lines of code in one hour, what we did was we built an application uh, that was effectively the simplest possible to-do list. There are a lot of things in this to-do list that you might make better. For instance, uh, one person commented that this was fake for some reason, that you actually need to add persistence to this. I can only do so much in one hour, but the idea is that this is a very simple showing you how to get started with Swift UI. Now, Swift UI, if you're new to Apple platform development, Swift UI is a new user interface framework that is more declarative than an imperative. And there's a lot we could talk about with that. But the idea is that Swift UI lets you write code that will compile for iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and now the Apple Vision Pro. And so one of the things that we did in that demo was we went ahead and we said, okay, well, let's take a look at this code and let's see what will it compile for. So if I go over here and I compile this code for the iPhone 15 Pro, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and build that live so you can see what it is that we're working with. Most of that webinar was based on using iOS. And you can go and you can check that video on YouTube. Sandra, I'm sure we'll put a, a link in the description or something to that effect so people can go back and watch it. But what you can see is that this simulator over here, again, this is a deliberately simple application, but it's a to-do list. And you can do all of the things that you would need a to-do list to do, which we'll show you here in just a moment. By the way, if you're wondering Will my computer be able to run the Apple Vision Pro simulator? It will, but you can see that it does slow things down quite a bit. So be ready for that. This, if you are really getting serious about developing for an Apple Vision Pro, you may want to consider one of the higher end models uh, with more beef. I'm running on a MacBook Air, so my computer is running a little bit slow today. Okay, so this is the simplest possible to-do list. And again, it's not special. In fact, it's deliberately simple, very much so on purpose. If I switch it over to dark mode, we get all the support out of the box. If I hit the plus button, I can say do something else and it adds it to the item. I can delete it if I want to. I can drag and drop this and I can rearrange it to a different part of the list. That's all we need to do with the to-do list. The point of the seminar that we did last time was if I hit stop on the iPhone 15 Pro, and I say, all right, I want to go ahead and compile this now for the Apple Vision Pro. The same exact code that I wrote will also compile on the Apple Vision Pro. And so you can see here that this application 
is the same exact code that is working on the iPhone, but it looks as though it belongs on an Apple Vision Pro. So you can see that we have this resizable window that we get default behavior for free. Um, you can see that if I tap this button, this item is gonna come up here and I can type do something else, or I can type here on the manual keyboard. Great demo. Up oh, there we go. Sure, you know what? That's gonna be the item that we add here. Perfect, just like I meant to do it. Uh, and you can see that I can do the same thing here. Using the same input controls that I would expect to use, I can drag things up and down the list. I can swipe right to left to be able to lead things. And this all works just like you would expect it to. I've got my navigation bar title in the top there. I've got all the items here. Everything just works out of the box. But there's one key difference. And this is what really makes you start to think about the differences between Vision OS and other operating systems. On an iPhone, you don't have a mouse. You don't have a track. You're not really pointing at anything. Your finger is the input mechanism. And when you put your finger over a certain item, you usually have a state on that view that responds to say like, ah, you've tapped this. So you've selected this particular item or you're gonna long press it to tap it. And you get that feedback immediately because you know your finger is tapping that screen and giving you that feedback of, okay, this is what I've tapped. On a Mac or on a web browser, you have what's called a hover state. So for example, in a more compiled application, if I open Safari, for example, what you can see is if I hover my mouse over the learn personal business things, you can see, and it's, it's a little bit hard to tell, um, but even though if I go over these buttons, you can see that as the mouse hovers over them, these buttons light up a little bit. And you can see if I hold it there long enough, you can see that a new tab appears beneath it to give me a hint as to what it is that I'm looking over. Now we've got that in Safari, but if I hover my mouse over these items here in my to-do list application, you'll notice that I get no feedback right away over telling me what it is that I'm looking at. Now, the difference in Vision OS is that you don't have a finger that you're using. You don't have a trackpad that you're using. You can use a trackpad with it. And that's something that's part of, uh, you know, good coherence between Vision OS and Mac OS and other computers. But in Vision OS, the input mechanism is your eyes. And so, this mouse here in the simulator represents where my eyes would specifically be looking. And as I hover over any of these, I don't get that feedback that tells me what is it that I'm looking at? How can I confirm that I'm either hovering over something that I wanna tap on, or I'm getting visual feedback that I'm looking at something that is selectable? Well, what we can do with Xcode is we can go here and we can make one change that will enable that focus state for us. Now, it's worth pointing out, what I'm about to do is a little bit hacky, but it's meant to show you how quick something can be written so that you get access to that. Instead of just having my text in a list, I'm instead going to add a button and I'm just gonna have it print tapped whenever I access it. And then the label of that button will be my text. So I've shifted it over in Swift UI from a text string to a button string. As soon as I do that and I recompile for the Apple Vision Pro, the application recompiles, and just by hovering my mouse over or what I would be doing with my eyes, you can see that right away, the different text that I am looking at is going to be selected. This may be a very, very small detail and you know almost minutiae to developing for Vision OS, but it's differences like these that belie the fact that there are user experience differences to Vision OS that we are all learning in real time. An opportunity to get into a boot camp and start to learn those UX principles as well as those coding tools that you have available to you is one of the best things you can do to start learning how to adapt what you already know to the platform that you are coding it for. So this kind of focus state is not something you may consider right off the bat for an iPhone application because if you tap it with your finger, then you have a tap state as opposed to a hover state or a focus state as Apple would call it. And there is a way to access that direct focus state without having to make each of these a button. Again, it is hacky. We're trying to do the simplest possible version of this. But what you can see is these are the kinds of things that are going to matter to your users. When you're developing for this platform, you need to think about those interactions. You need to think about what a user expects because if we revert back to what we had before and we recompile that, the first thing the user is going to notice 
if we put our little to-do list right here next to, let's say, Safari, and you can see that over here on the left hand, on the right hand side, as I'm looking at buttons, I'm getting that feedback. Ah, this is what I mean to be selecting. If I tap here, I can select this, or I can tap this button. But the difference over here, now that I'm in my to-do list, it can show people that maybe the application's broken. Maybe things aren't working the way that I'm supposed to. Those are gonna be some of the core principles we talk about in this bootcamp. Not just the technical tools that you have available to you with Swift UI and with Vision OS and Xcode and all the things that you build with, but we're also gonna talk about common UX principles that make it that make it different for you to understand how you're developing for this platform. So now that we've talked about that, I think it's worth me unsharing my screen. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of briefly summarize what the syllabus is for our, um, our bootcamp that we are doing. So this is gonna be a six week bootcamp and I'm gonna be joined by a couple of really awesome mentors. Uh, Tim Mitra is one of them. I believe he's here today. Tim, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, but you're gonna to wanna to check out this bootcamp if you're interested in it. And we've got a promo code actually. So that promo code uh, that we're giving out in case you're interested, it's gonna be VOS with David 0424. I'll type that into the chat. Uh, and if you use that promo code, you'll actually get 10% off signing up for the bootcamp if you're interested. Uh, so that's what you can go to if you're interested to try that bootcamp. But what are we going to be actually talking about in the bootcamp? Well, week one, we're going to do just a basic introduction to Vision OS. Again, this is a new platform for a lot of people. And a new platform comes with a lot of nuance. I've had this device now for about a month and a half. And every day I feel like I learned something new about it. There's some new niche feature that I can access for it. There's something new that I could use for it. Every day I feel like there's something I'm like, ah, oh, this is really cool. I can't wait to show the few other people I know that have this. We're gonna give you that Vision OS introduction and we're gonna talk about taking what you know about two-dimensional development, things with Windows, and we're gonna talk about how to stretch that into three dimensions. We're gonna talk about what it means to be developing in a window versus what it means to be developing in a volume. And we're gonna talk about Reality Kit and how to build a reality view. This is not gonna be a full dive into AR Kit and learning about three-dimensional development. You're not gonna be able to go develop for Unreal Engine after this, but you are gonna learn how to use the tools and how to get to a point where you feel comfortable working with 3D models in Vision OS. We'll also talk about building an immersive view so you can understand what that actually looks and feels like as you go through the uh, bootcamp. In week two, we're going to cover accessibility. You may wonder why is accessibility important for people using a pair of immersive goggles? Well, it's just as important because there are people who are seeking those kinds of experiences and they may need voice control. They may um, you know, be impaired with their vision. They may be hearing impaired. They may be uh, you know, movement impaired. Apple continues to innovate these tools that are available for people using them to using the devices to be able to make use of them as best as possible. And so we're going to talk about how voiceover has been implemented in uh, Vision OS, and we're going to talk about the human interface guidelines as well to continue to talk about what you need to know as you develop for this platform. In week three, we're going to dig into some more of the key components of Reality Kit. We're going to talk about the core functionalities. We're going to talk about what it means to develop for Reality Kit and the key difference between your basic Swift UI window application that we did a demo of earlier versus what you can actually do with Reality Kit and looking at a rendering of an object in three dimensions. In week four, we're going to shift over to creating 3D models. We're going to talk about what it means to create those in Reality Kit and how to use an app that you can get on your phone today called Reality Composer Pro to be able to build those models in real time. In week five, we're gonna shift over to digging more into Reality Composer Pro to create different augmented reality experiences. And then we're gonna start talking about what your capstone project is. Over the course of the entire bootcamp, you're gonna be working on one project and everything you learn over the course of every week is going to contribute to that project. That way, by the time you're done with the bootcamp in week six, where you'll give a demo of your capstone project, you'll have been able to dote on every single thing you've learned and all of the different things that you've built into that application so that you can have something that you can ship on the App Store for the Apple Vision Pro. That's what we're gonna be covering over the course of six weeks. I really hope you join me for this bootcamp. Again, we've got that VOS with David promo code that you can enter for 10% off. At this point, I will be taking questions if anybody has them.
Thanks so much, David. That was great. Um, we've had a couple of questions about whether it makes sense to join the boot camp if you don't have a Vision Pro device already. Mm, that's a tough one. So technically speaking, you do not need an Apple Vision Pro in order to join this boot camp. It is not technically required. However, if you were looking to get into iPhone development and you didn't own an iPhone, there is no substitute for the real thing. And that goes for developing for any platform that you have. Imagine trying to do web development with a browser. That would be preposterous, right? Browsers are unfortunately much more accessible than Apple Vision Pros. So if you want to try this bootcamp out, you absolutely can, and you do not need an Apple Vision Pro in order to go through this bootcamp. Does it make sense to do it without one? I would say you're going to immediately miss out on a lot of the nuance of the operating system if you don't have one, simply because there is so much baked into the user experience that you just don't get with the simulator. Case in point, the demo I have done for you today. Um, so in order to go take a step past that, it's really recommended that you get a device. I recognize that they can be expensive, so I know that that's a judgment call people have to make. But if you're gonna develop for a platform, it's generally good practice to get the device you're building for so that you can actually test out how the experience works on that device. I know that may not the most satisfying answer, but that's how I feel about that. As a participant in the current iOS bootcamp, is the Vision OS bootcamp a good follow-on? I would say so. I think um, if that's the, I, I think, hmm, let me think about that for a second. The shortest possible answer is yes. If you're interested in learning about other platforms and how you can extend the skills that you're learning in the iOS bootcamp to other platforms like Vision OS, this can be a very interesting bootcamp for you to be able to work in. Um, I already talked about you know whether you need a Vision Pro device to attend. You don't, but it's probably a good idea uh, to be able to do that. So that's up to you. But I think if that's something you want to go into, you certainly can. We're certainly in the Vision OS bootcamp. We're going to be catering to people that have like some of the bare minimum skills that you already know how to use in iOS. So some of those skills will be directly applicable right as you go into the Vision OS bootcamp. But uh, I think that's something that is a judgment call for each person. So it really depends on whether or not you want to get into Vision OS development at all. And for that, I would recommend trying a device. Apple has demos that you can give a shot. That needs to contribute to your decision. How much time do you spend each workday wearing the device or using it for development? At first, not a lot because it used to really hurt my forehead. Uh, I have a picture somewhere of a giant red line across my forehead and I had just the one band with it stuck to the back of my head. That was painful. And then Federico Batici, the person who writes MacStories.net, talked about how you can get this one 3D printed tool added to the edge of it. And if you get another solo knit band, it's a little bit weird to work with two of these bands. And I'm trying to work with it in terms of the virtual background. So of course it's, look at that, here we go. So we got in front. Now that I have these two bands, I have been able to work in this thing for up to three hours at a time and not feeling like I needed a break. Good idea to take a break over time. You don't want to hurt your eyes. I've not felt motion sickness in it. I have not felt dizzy. I've not felt anything like that. It's just the physical comfort of the device. And for me, I personally needed that. They're making all sorts of bands. I think that's going to be something that changes a lot over time. But I think that's going to be something that you have to make a determination about. I have spent a good three hours at a time in it, though. And you definitely find it useful for your development work? I have so far. Um, I don't think... Hmm. I like it because, again, I'm particular about my work environment, and so I can put windows wherever I want. I can build my environment to be the way that I want it, and I really like having that freedom in the device. I admittedly am trying to make it work, so I'm eager to test it out and to see like how well it works for me, but I don't think you have to. I think over time it's going to get easier and easier to use, and I will say having the virtual display, being able to spread the monitor as big as I want to put it wherever I want with the keyboard right in front of me, that's very, very helpful. Will there be a portion in the bootcamp on how to add Vision OS to an already functioning iOS or Mac OS app? 
We're not going to focus on that specifically. Um, we're going to talk about interop insofar as Swift UI code that you know how to write, figuring out what makes it work for Vision OS and where you have to write platform specific code in order to make that work. Um, but we're not going to really talk too much about interop between an existing application on your phone and how that would interop with uh, Vision OS. Will you also cover when it makes sense to use native Apple frameworks such as Swift UI versus Unity? I have my own thoughts after doing HoloLens previously, but I'd be very curious if that's discussed during the boot camp. Mm -hmm. I think we're open to discussing that. Um, you know, frankly, I'm a little bit out of my depth with that, just in terms of learning. I've not done a whole lot of Unity development. Uh, rest assured, I'm going to come prepared with a little bit more, you know, background and context on that throughout the boot camp. So we can certainly have ad hoc discussions about that. But off the top of my head, that's not going to be something we discuss. We're going to talk about using Reality Kit, and the boot camp will be focused mostly on when to use those native Apple frameworks. Now, if you're into game development, that's a different story altogether. And I think that's one of those things where you kind of know where the limitations of the frameworks that Apple gives you you start to run into those versus what you would have with Unity. I think to that point, it comes down to how much existing work that you've already written do you want to leverage? That's where Unity can be helpful because Unity existed before the Apple Vision Pro. So you can probably leverage a lot of that work in Unity with work that you would do in the Apple Vision Pro. But that's going to be up to you to decide like what style of development you're trying to do. And Jody asks, do you need the AVP developer strap? at 299 extra dollars for the best experience in the boot camp. We don't think that you do. Um, me, frankly, I need to look it up and see what exactly that is. Um, the developer shop. No, okay, I see what that is right away. Um, I don't think that you do need that. Um, I've been able to build applications natively to my uh, Apple Vision Pro without it but I'm fortunate in so far that my work computer has been on the same network. And so the wireless deployment has been working fine. This looks like something that's very helpful. And so again, that's a function of the investment you want us to try to make in your, um, in your device that you have, but do you need that for development during the bootcamp? No. Should our AVP be downgraded to release OS version or okay to run the beta versions? I think as long as you can, I think you're probably okay using beta versions. The key thing you're going to want to check is if you have your Apple Vision Pro in beta using a, using a beta operating system, can you still build any application on it with your existing version of Xcode on your Mac? If you can, you're fine. If being on the beta is something that breaks that, which like I have not experienced yet, and I'm pretty sure I'm on a beta Vision Pro OS um, or Vision OS 1.1, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. And certainly we're not going to prohibit that as part of the boot camp. We had a question about um, what do, does Codeco offer if you don't have time for the live boot camp? I'd just like to mention that we also have an on demand Vision OS boot camp. Demetra, who's been answering some of the questions in the chat, is the, the lead mentor for the On Demand Bootcamp. And he also wrote quite a lot of the material we're using in our curriculum. The difference between the live and the On Demand Bootcamp is you can do the On Demand anytime. It's 100% asynchronous. You still get mentor support and you still get a certificate of completion and a capstone app at the end to show off in your um, resume to prove that you can do this. But you can study anytime you want. You can take as long as you want to finish it. You can do it only on weekends or whenever you like. The live bootcamp has the advantages that you have. Um, you have twice weekly sessions where you meet live and David and your other mentors will answer your questions, help you through your homework also have presentations and other discussions like um, talking about game development would be something that you could bring up during these live sessions if you wanted. So it all depends on what kind of experience that you're looking for. The code that we've given you, which again is VOS with David 0424, 
is for the live bootcamp only. If you'd like a discount for the on-demand bootcamp, please email me at marketing at cadeco.com and I'll see what I can do for you for that. We are currently in our last week of enrollment for the live bootcamp. We just started today a last chance sale. With the code that I just gave you now, you can get an extra 10% off that. Please hurry and join because we don't have that many seats left for this uh, enrollment period. Does anyone else have any questions before we say goodbye for tonight? I'm really excited by the number of people that have signed up for this so far. So um, um, so really looking forward to having a good cohort of people in this bootcamp. Well, thank you so much for coming. I've had a lot of fun learning about Vision OS today. I hope you have as well. If you have any questions after this, please email marketing at cadeco.com or support at cadeco.com if you have a question about your account. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you later. Thanks, y'all.